This meeting of the City of Eureka Springs City Council will come to order. The clerk will call roll, please. Joyce Eller? Here. Terry McClellan? Here. James DeVito? Here. David Mitchell? Here. E. Precupile? Here. Nikki Schneider? Here. We have six. Right. Please stand for the pledge of the flag. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay. Moves us on to approval of the agenda. Motion to discuss. Approve. Second. Floor is open. Mr. Snyder. Um, could we move under new business? Could we move number four and number five up under number one of unfinished because almost everybody out there is here on number four and number five? Second. Okay. Uh, which one are we putting... Four and five of new up under number one of old. Okay, can we put uh, the um, uh, put the trails first and then the... Um, yeah, that's four that's a five. proposal. Four that's yeah, okay. yeah, okay. But as long right. as that one comes first, because that looks like it's the most people. Mr. Mitchell, you had your hand up, sir? Uh, yes, sir. I'd like to um, uh, delete under new business number one, reclaiming all streets and alleys and green space. Because we will be discussing the master plan, and the conversation can go there. Second. Okay. Anybody else? I can't find. Okay. It. If there's no other changes. Friggin' agenda. Uh, all in favor of the amended agenda, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Right. on the approval of the minutes for starting with June the 9th, 2014. Move to approve. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? It's going to be June the 3rd, I'm sorry, 23rd, 2014 minutes. Motion to approve. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. This is on the committee, uh, commission, committee authority reports and expired terms. Um, looks like the only business that I have here is the uh, renewal applications for Mr. Richard Grinnell, position number six under HDC, and Miss Susie Allen, number seven. Yes. I move to reappoint Richard Grinnell to position six on the HDC. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Wait, wait for Susie Allen. Motion to approve Susie Allen. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Ms. Allen's in. Brings us to public comments. Yes, ma'am. Move to make both of those immediate. No. Okay. no, that's immediate. They just got. Was that last yeah. time? Because I don't remember which being. Yeah. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Yike. Uh, under public comments, uh, everybody out in the hallway, we need to limit your comments to three minutes so they'll be timed. And I'll remind you when you come back in. Okay. Starting Mr. Dick Titus. I can't find mine. I had it here, and I don't know where it is. No, I don't. That's not extra, but I'll share it. Hello. Okay. My share. name is Dick Titus. I live at 12 White Street. And I've got two things I want to talk about really quickly. Uh, I'm supporting the resolution in commemoration and celebration of marriage equality as proposed. I feel this resolution is an opportunity to express the diversity of Eureka Springs to all citizens and visitors. County Clerk Jane Osborne's compassion made this historic event possible and will forever be recorded in history that the first same-sex license in the South was issued in Eureka Springs, Arkansas on 510 of 14. And I know that's before you all tonight. The other thing I want to talk about is the fire stations in town, and I've talked to uh, Captain Williams, uh, Chief Williams. Uh, I'm also here to ask the City Council to put the sale of the Eureka Springs Fire Department's station number one across from the courthouse, and that station number two located at 14 White Street on the next council meeting agenda. Captain Williams and I have talked about a new station in the Crescent Hotel service area for a long time. It's possible that suitable land has been located, and some discussion with the owner of the property has already taken place. Captain Williams feels that the sale of the two existing stations would pay a large portion of the expense of a new multi-base station. 
I need a council person to make the motion, followed by a second, to get this matter on the next council agenda. Does that have to be done now? We can't. No, do sir. It. We can't do it during discussion. I can't do it. Now. I don't know anything. About I don't know. This. <laughs> we, we'll anyway, work with thank you for your time and, and good luck, guys. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Uh, next will be Mr. Jeff Chambers. What was the name, Mark? Jeff Chambers. Oh, second one. Huh? Wow, okay. Hello, Mr. Chambers. Hi, Thank you, sir. Go ahead and announce your name, please. Okay. Hello, I'm Jeff Chambers, new resident, relatively new resident here in Eureka Springs. And uh, I'm just here this evening uh, as a volunteer with the uh, Arkansas Democratic Party. Uh, we're currently uh, working our campaigns for Senate, Governor, uh, Democrats up and down the ballot. We're really being outspent this year, uh, as I'm sure you're aware. So in order to win elections for Democrats, we're really going to need volunteers to help us get out the message um, as well as the vote here locally. Uh, we have uh, several events scheduled uh, here in Eureka Springs over the next couple of, of weeks. And um, also, if anybody is interested in doing any volunteer activities to help out with the campaigns, Again, I'm Jeff Chambers. Just see me. I'm going to hang around in the lobby a little while. And uh, also, I wanted to make one final announcement. Uh, there is a, our first event uh, is going to be a lunch uh, with um, David and uh, Barbara Pryor uh, here on Wednesday. Uh, that is 1145 at the local flavor. That's going to be a real nice event. So we wanted to extend an invitation to everyone here. For that, and that's all I have. Unless there are any questions, thank you very thank much. You, sir. Uh, I had a question. I had a question. Will the lunch for David Pryor be a, like a community forum where he can answer questions? I wish I could answer that for you. I'm here for uh, for Peter okay. Travers tonight. He had asked me to come in to do this, so I, I will find out. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, well, I'm assuming it will. I have okay. one. I have one too. Is, is the Democratic Party paying for the lunch? <laughs> <laughs> That's a that's a question I would have to get answered. That's a, that's a no. It's fundraiser. It's a, it's a get together. All right. Next will be Miss Susan Chambers. Or sorry, Miss Susan Morrison. It's looking at upside down. Hi, Susan. Sorry about how loud it got out there. Okay. You've got a big crowd, yes, a do. really big crowd. It's a very positive thing, and I'm really excited. The people have really come together in Eureka about our trails, and I think it's really an important issue. It's our history. It's who we are. It's an amazing way for us to advertise ourselves and talk about ourselves. I think it's very powerful. And I think it's very good that our councils become very positive about this. I'm very, very hopeful about this. I think this is a wonderful thing, and I hope that you will come forward with great courage and foresight for your town and for your constituency, because there's a whole lot of people out there really excited about this. Thank you. Thank good you. to see you all. Would you send Randy in, please? Randy? Sure, I'll send Randy in. says Randy Woodward. Send Randy He's Woodward next. Right there. Okay, I'll get it. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Hey, that is good. You're hired. How are you doing, sir? Good. How are you doing, there? Well, Susan and I moved into town about a year ago. We've lived here for 35 years, but we've fallen back in love with the trails. But that's not what's important. I think I have something that we can all relate to, whether you hike the trails, care about them, or whatever. Uh, how many of you have children and grandchildren? Show of hands here. Great grand. Okay. Well, we also have children and grandchildren. And our son, Charlie Morrison, graduated from high school here. He and his lovely wife went out to California, then on to a little town called Netherland, up above Boulder. There they practiced their trade of being architects. Netherland's a lot like Eureka, and they thought they found a new home until they 
changed their mind and decided to come back to Eureka Springs for lots of reasons. Now that they're here, we have all enjoyed their skill through the new school, the new parks, and many other things. But beyond that, Susan and I have enjoyed our grandson and our granddaughter. Just last week, Nathan and I walked not only walked the trails, but we fished Black Bass Lake, where he caught his first fish on a fly rod. Then, less than a week later, he caught 30 fish over at Leatherwood. Nicole is part of the track team here in Eureka Springs. She meets with us just to run along with their friends and other members of the track on not only Leatherwood and Black Bass, but throughout Eureka Springs. Now, would they be state champions without the trails? Maybe, maybe not, but it sure makes it a lot nicer. So what I see happening is that I would love for Nathan and Nicole to go out and experience, like their parents did, things away from Eureka Springs, but come back to Eureka Springs. This is their home. This is all of our homes. And we need to think beyond ourselves and think to the next generation and the generation after that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Rachel Briggs. We need a bumper. Yeah. Hi, I'm Rachel Briggs. And my husband Ryan and I live at One Magnetic. Um, on behalf of the Eureka Springs Dog Park Advisory Committee, we are proud to announce that the Eureka Springs Bark Park, an off-leash dog park, held its grand opening this morning. Over 40 dogs and nearly twice as many people joined us for this momentous occasion. This is Carroll County's first dog park and will be a tremendous asset to our residents and our dog-friendly town, as according to Travel Industry Association of America, 30 million people travel with their pets every year. All of the dogs got along famously, and the people were well-behaved, too, making good use of the poop bag stations. All dog parks have rules, and the Eureka Springs Bark Park rules are posted on the entry gates and on our Facebook page at Eureka Springs Bark Park. Following the rules keeps everyone, two-legged and four-legged, safe and having fun. And we thank you in advance for following them. On a final note, we would like to thank the Dog Park Committee and Parks and Rec, especially Bruce Levine, who supported us all along and even helped us out there building the park. We would also like to thank the Chamber and the Mayor for attending today. Last but not least, we thank our community for all of your support. Without you and this town's love of dogs, we wouldn't have opened the gates today. Thank you, and we hope to see you at the Bark Park. Woof, woof. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Mr. Rex Willis. How you doing, sir? I'm Rex Willis. Yeah, I'm bumping up for you just a tad. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, I've lived here for almost seven years now, but when growing up, uh, this is where we spent our summers. Uh, and I've been to, lived in several cities, uh, including places like Albuquerque. And the trails there are out of this world. I mean, the number of people that are on them daily uh, is just incredible. And our hometown actually opened up a trail right before I left my hometown. And there was some controversy there about opening a trail. But once it was in, again, it was it really shocked me as to how many people were actually on the trails. Uh, There's families riding with their kids uh, on bicycles to people that were walking. Uh, a lot of people that were getting exercise that weren't getting exercise before. So trails, you know, I've, I've heard a lot about a lot of tourists using trails and stuff. I don't personally look at it that way. I look at it as the citizens being able to actually use the trails to get somewhere to say hi to their neighbors and it's, it's just a very pleasant way to get out of the bubble which we call vehicles uh, the last thing I'd like to say is can we not have fluoride it would be nice what? not have fluoride a lot of states, several states and some cities are actually getting rid of the fluoride now and Arkansas seems to be going the other way so it would be nice if we didn't have that thank you thank you sir Denton West.
There he is. Yes. By the microphone. Come on. Before we before we let Mr. West take uh, take the mic, uh, I'd like to thank him for the new bike rack sitting outside. Uh, for those that haven't seen it, take a look at it. That? It's heavy duty and it's full. So yes, thank you, Dennis. I thought it was going to be brought up tonight. Okay, I'm here to support the trail system <laughs> master plan because we need it so bad. Just all the things going on. It was on the news tonight in Fayetteville. Their trail plan. They're wrapping their deal up. The, I have a unique position up here, a bike shop surrounded by luxury lodging, and I get to see the people coming in here to looking for trails, coming here to ride their bikes and hike. Family friendly. That this town's not real family friendly. A, a trail system would would change that. The 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 traffic. A trail system would would cut down on this gridlock, leave it open for the trolleys. The public transportation. Um, just to keep it short and sweet, one more thing here. Um, we have such a unique community, all these reservations around all these parks and all these springs. Each of these springs in towns has a reservation around it. Uh, some of them are huge. And by vacating these plotted streets and plotted alleyways that the city fathers put in place, that blocks our access to our reservations in the city code downstairs it says that the reservations around these springs are for public use as long as the grass shall grow and we can't get to our property if we keep vacating these these cities and alleyways i have here the just got it in the mail the latest version of the arkansas tour guide by the Arkansas Parks and Tourism Commission. And we don't have crystal bridges on here. We don't have the Bill Clinton Library. What we have on the cover of the 2014 Arkansas Tour Guide is a trail that makes a loop around 34 miles of urban trails linking 38 parks and so much more. This is the cover of the Arkansas tour guide and there's a trail system on it that pretty much says it all that's where that's where it's headed we, we need this it'll make a huge impact on the economy here we need to I mean we the bikers and the hot rodders they're all set but we need to diversify we need to get another group of well-to-do people in here that are going to walk downtown and come back with sackfuls of goodies from all the shops that come here with their bicycles looking for trails to ride and hike on. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. All right, next will be Josh Vale. I'm all right. Okay, thank you. Charlotte and there you go. Good. How you doing, sir? Great. How are you doing? Good. Well, I'm here, obviously, to speak for the trail system. Uh, you know, it's just really important. I plan all of my vacations around being outside and going to new trails. And a lot of people who come to this town, we send them to Lake Leatherwood, and they love it. And I think it'd be a really unique thing for them to see Eureka Springs from a different view rather than just riding their car around the loop once. You know, this way they get there in the heart of it, and they really get to see more than they ever could. And it's in and out of the trail system. Not going to be walking through anybody's yard and hanging out. That's all i got to say. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Uh, I'll attempt this next one. Uh, I believe it's Charlotte, and I cannot read the last name. Harper? That's great. Huh? Okay. Charlotte and Harper. Open. open it? Yeah. It's driving me crazy when it's halfway. Right. <laughs> okay. How about, how about the other gentleman? Yeah, we move along with her. You can tell us the next person when you call this person up so we 
Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take care of that part. Thank you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. All right, if Charlotte and Harper don't want to talk, it looks like Mr. Chris Fisher. Come in, Chris. Good evening. Thank you for letting us come in and talk to you about our feelings about the uh, Parks Master Trails uh, plan. I would simply like to advocate that this group uh, take a serious look at the merits of the plan. I would like to also extend um, a great deal of gratitude towards the committee who has put together one of, I think, the best documents that's ever been produced by a a group of citizens trying to improve their town. Is it a perfect document? No. But there is a lot of hope that I see in what these people have put together. And I would also like to remind the council that in my reading of the master plan, I see that it takes away nothing that has been established. I believe that these green zones, these streets, these alleys, these uh, thoroughfares are public property, and I wish that you would somehow a- adopt this plan in such a way that those thoroughfares are retained for our public use. And uh, I think that's all I'm going to say. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Mr. Gillette, have you got your beeper on your computer? Is that, is that your beeper? You're a... Uh, is that yours making the noise? It sounds like somebody's cell phone. No, it's coming from the unit over here. Is that here. what it is? Okay, I didn't know, so I want to make sure. I've never heard it before. It's probably what? Okay. All right, we can work around it. Nathan Griffey. How are you doing, sir? Good evening. My name's Nate Griffey, and uh, I'm here on Pro Trail. And uh, I'd like to say that the very name Eureka Springs, particularly the springs part of it, reflects nature. I believe that's some of our greatest assets. The springs that we have here, the forests, the bluffs, the lakes, and the rivers, and the trails are the gateway to all of that. Um, several weeks ago, in Travel and Leisure magazine, there was a, uh, an article published, and they named Eureka Springs one of the best mountain towns. Actually, in that article, Eureka Springs was 19 out of 20 towns listed. And I personally went through and searched out each one of those towns. 17 out of those 20 towns have an in-town trail system. Beyond just a leatherwood and a black bass and something much more, they actually have an in-town network where you can go to the post office, the library, common tourist attractions, and I think that would be an asset to us. Now, I ride my bike on the trails, I walk my dog on the trails, and I believe the people who do those things are already probably on board with this. But to address the people who may not ever set foot on a trail, I still believe that they're an asset to this community. Uh, The reason why I say that, it's not uncommon. on, On Facebook, I follow a group called FAST, and that stands for Friends at Slaughter Pen Trails. They maintain a lot of the trails over in Bentonville and around the Crystal Bridges area. And it's not uncommon to see a post on there saying, hey, are the trails dry or muddy? We're thinking of coming over from Jonesboro for the weekend. All right? And those people are going to come and spend the weekend, and they're probably going to eat something while they're there, and they're probably maybe going to stay in a hotel. They're probably going to buy a tank of gas. And uh, I think that's a huge untapped resource that this community could take advantage of. Um, I appreciate you all listening to me. Hope you'll vote pro trail. Thank you, sir. Mr. Brian Hostage. There you go. Standing room only out there. Yeah. Brian Hostick, uh, Sherwood Court. Um, my wife and I run that little business, and on a on a daily basis, we're we're at 
asked what to do and, and what can our guests do in this town. Um, my wife and I love to hike, and, and we always recommend the hiking that is available, and our guests come back and thank us every time. Uh, Black Bass Dam, that lake area. Um, and so we would just really ask that you uh, you do that. We uh, think about it hard, and, and please please pass it. We, uh, um, well, my son, uh, our son-in-law is kind of a geeky guy, and he got me hooked up with Google Analytics. And uh, I was astonished that um, over half of the hits that we were getting was from a crowd that was 30 and younger. And we're not converting all those people uh, to stay with us. Um, this is the kind of a thing that's going to attract more people to, to town. And uh, thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Dale Nyberg. Bumper. It's that door pan is sticks up and hits a door. I could bring a soft squeaky dog toy next time. <laughs> this would just squeak instead of banging. How are you doing, sir? Good evening. Come in and introduce yourself. My name is uh, Dale Nyberg. I live at 14 College Street. And uh, my wife and I moved here about a year ago, a little over a year ago. Uh, I'm one of the little people go to meetings around town regarding trails. Uh, the usual suspects show up, you know, the trails people, the trails committee. But you know, there are 18, 1900, the rest of us live here in Eureka Springs, Arkansas. It's not that we're not interested, but, you know, we're not well-spoken. And the people who show up, the usual suspects, God love them, they're so passionate, so well-spoken. I mean, it's really incredible to hear these people speak. The rest of us, we're here too. I walk around town and love to talk to people. <clears throat> Catch them sitting on their front porches, talk to the waitress at the restaurant. And uh, Since I've become interested in trails, I've asked a lot of them about trails, what you're feeling. A lot of them are ambivalent. They don't know much about it. Um, the others have objections, but it's because they don't really understand it all. I mean, there are things they just haven't thought about, questions they haven't had answered. But my feeling is, this is a gift. This is a huge, huge gift that's being offered to the city of the people of the city of Eureka Springs. And it's being offered to them by way of you folks sitting at the table here this evening. And I would ask that you pass this gift on to the people. You know the little bugs can be worked out. You know it can. It'll be changed over time. If a pathway doesn't work out, we'll do another one. But it's a gift intended for the people of Eureka Springs. You know, even for the folks like me, the little people, I don't own a business, don't own much property, own my house. But I think it's something bigger than just the economics of it in the end. And I really think that should you pass this this evening, years from now you'll be hailed as heroes. <laughs> Do it, please. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Carolyn set. seen Bay out there. I didn't see Carolyn. Carolyn She's here. Okay. Hi, Carolyn. Hi. How are you? Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I'm Carolyn Biasat. My husband and I, Bay, um, Bay and I moved here in 1977. And um, since that time, we have heard a lot of city councils speaking about tourism, and rightly so. We have a lot to do with uh, making money here. We can't stay here. But um, this 
trail system is something really for the people. And when I taught school from 1977 to 2003 in Eureka Springs, first grade teacher most of the time, parents would come to me all the time and say, there's nothing for the kids to do here. This is something that kids will do. It's healthy. It's wholesome. It is a wonderful thing for the kids. Parents, even the tourists, yes, them too. But let's not forget our own. Um, I just want to ask you, please vote yes to the trails. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Ben Rada. Order. How you doing, sir? Hi there. My name is Ben Rada, and I've lived here for almost five years. Um, I want to start by saying first, thank you so much for all that you guys do here in our community. And uh, thank you for giving us the opportunity to have a voice uh, in what's going on here. Uh, I'd like to offer my uh, vote of support for the trails plan. Um, I've heard a lot of great reasons why I'm standing, why I'm standing out in the hall. And uh, it's really exciting to hear. Uh, I would say, you know, let's take advantage of the momentum that's already here. Uh, first off, with uh, the Xterra event, with Fat Tire Festival, with the uh, Eureka Triathlon, these are all events that are bringing people in town because they want to appreciate and enjoy uh, our trails. But then second has to do with something that happened uh, with me about two months ago. I heard that the property next to mine had sold. And so uh, about a week later, a brand new truck and a really nice trailer shows up on the property. And so I go out to meet these new neighbors. And it was a young couple who had a child. And... Um, they had uh, bought the property specifically so that they could come and spend their weekends uh, at Lake Leatherwood mountain biking. So I watch them as they take turns. Uh, one person will go and ride while they watch the child, and then the other person uh, will come back, and they, they take shifts uh, doing that. Their master plan is to build a house there. And so this is bringing not just tourists but residents to our community. Um, and that's really exciting. Uh, again, they, they intend to build. When I told them about this idea of a master plan, you could see their eyes just light up, and they felt like they had really made a good decision to come here to this town. So thank you so much. Uh, I, I hope that you guys vote yes on this plan. Thank you, sir. Michael Walsh. south with any luck less than a year from now we'll probably have a lot more weddings here uh, but I'm here to talk about the resolution you're considering tonight uh, that supports our married to equality reception we have planned for August 2 one good reason to vote for it is that there are no really good reasons to vote against it this is a feel-good resolution but that's not all it is it's the kind of statement that should have been made in May when county officials gave the town a black eye by evicting people from the corridor one flight up and then slamming the courthouse doors in their face. People had driven through the night, slept in their cars, lined up at daybreak, closed their shops, and waited in line for up to five hours, most of whom were eventually disappointed. Our own citizens had to rush to Fayetteville to get what they were denied in their own hometown. It was not our finest hour. The news stories that went viral weren't datelined Carroll County or Berryville. They were datelined Eureka Springs. We didn't create that mess, but we suffered from it. This resolution is a way of making up for that in a positive way. It's a statement of where we stand as a community, a community that values equality and hospitality for all, a city whose door is always open. You may not know this, but Lamont Ritchie wrote a similar resolution to the one you're considering tonight. And I regret not backing him up on that sooner. He is now a married man with a hyphenated last name. But he too had to leave the place he calls home in order to make that happen. 
I know he was hurt by that, and a lot of us hurt right along with him. We can't erase those headlines or the hurt, but with this resolution, we can resolve to do better and be better. As for the reception itself on August 2, it's already gotten good media attention in the five surrounding states where we get our tourists. A half dozen restaurants, dozens of businesses, and a small army of volunteers are creating another first for this town. The first ever <coughs> open to the public reception for gay newlyweds and their friends and the straight families who love them. The first two women married here to each other will be there, so will the two attorneys who won the case that made that possible, and last but not least, Jane Osborne. In effect, you're the ones in charge of sending out the invitations to the party, and I'll help you do that tonight. Thank you very much. It's Wendy LeFay. Hi, I'm Wendy LeFay, and I would like to speak about the trail system and also about the fluoride in the water. Um, I believe very strongly in being the change that we wish to create in the world, and that's one of the reasons why I live in this town, because <coughs> Eureka Springs represents so many things that I would love the world to become. We are already doing that. And I'm very proud to live here. Um, <coughs> regarding the fluoride issue, we have voted fluoride down a number of times as a city. And um, I realize that we have a, a state issue going on here. But I believe that we should keep our water clean. I believe that clean drinking water is a right that we should have as citizens of our city and of our country, of the world. And um, I was lucky enough to grow up out in the country on a well, so I didn't have fluoride in my water. And I currently have a home that has a well. I actually specifically had that as one of the things on my list that I chose because I wanted to have control over clean water and I knew this was an issue coming up. I, I wish for my town that it keep the water clean. Um, as far as the trails, um, again, be the change you wish to be in the world. Um, I hike all the time. It's part of my wellness program for myself. Um, it's something that is important to me personally. I was hiking around the town last night. It was beautiful. Um, perfect weather. I'm hiking around Lake Leatherwood constantly, Black Bass Lake. It would be really exciting to me if I could hike all the way through the city in and out of the trail system. And not just for myself, but my family that comes to visit. I take them hiking. My dad needs it. He's kind of overweight. Don't tell him I said that. Um, but as a community, I believe that um, having a trail system would enrich our community for future generations. Um, and, you know, we can share it with the tourists too. That's nice. But I would just really hope that we can create a trail system here. It would really add to our quality of life. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Juanita Kreider. Hi, I'm Juanita Kreider, and I'm here to support the trails. Um, I live in Eureka Springs because I love the like-minded people. We are an environmentally environmental-friendly community, um, and I feel like trails are going to improve um, 
everything about our community. I'm actually a school teacher at Clear Springs School, and I take kids out to teach them outdoor education. Um, to be able to have more trail systems besides the ones that we have will uh, enhance their experience here, too. Um, I have kids. This town is not a family-friendly town. I've thought about moving to other communities that I've been to where the community has something to do together. And I feel like this trail system would do that for our youth. And to have healthy options for youth. The youth don't have anything to do in this town. To get kids on trails, to teach them, to lead by example. We are the example, and I know that you guys are the example too. And I would ask that you please vote yes for, for this trail system. Thank you. Thank you. Bill King. John Rankin. John Rankin. Rankin. John Rankin. Okay, thank you. Thanks, sir. Paul Rist. Christ. Wrist. I'll get it right. One way or the other. Lamont Ritchie. Mr. Ritchie's not here? Okay, is Mr. Wrist apparently is not here either. Okay. I'm here. Oh, there you are. Okay. Okay. Good evening, Lamont Ritchie. You have before you tonight a resolution, another installment, if you will, of a long line of acts performed by this city to acknowledge and to respect those people whose sexual orientation has been the basis for years of derision, discrimination, and disentitlement. Neither understanding nor approving of homosexuality is necessary to take this next step in doing what's right. Regardless of one's personal feelings, two people of the same sex entering into marriage will have no effect on anyone unless others choose to be bothered by it. On May 9th, a brief window of opportunity opened for two such people and for more than a thousand others when the Pulaski County Circuit Judge ruled that the state's ban on same-sex marriage was unconstitutional. The next day, two women from Fort Smith came to Eureka to apply for a license and to be married. They represented the first same-sex couple to be married in the state of Arkansas, ever, and it happened here, in Eureka Springs, on a sunny s Saturday afternoon that, except for the humiliating obstacle course they had to negotiate, was an absolutely fabulous day for them. During that week, who did what, when or how, county, city or state, in the public side, little else mattered other than it happened in Eureka Springs. And fair or not, the reality is that those in public service are held to a standard that is somewhat higher than other professions. So the actions and words, or the lack thereof, of public officials were and continue to be closely scrutinized. That time is part of history now. We can't change it, but the consequences of it are still up for grabs. This is where the city council comes into play. A celebration is planned for the first weekend in August. A time to rejoice the positive side of what did happen here on May 10th. This resolution is simple. It's an acknowledgement by the city that Arkansas history was made in Eureka Springs on May 10th, 2014. It's a further acknowledgement that this celebration continues the tradition that all people are to be treated equitably, regardless of race, religion, national origin, sex, handicap or veteran status, or sexual orientation. It is my hope that this resolution receives a unanimous approval tonight. If for no other reason, then now is the time just to do the right thing. Thank you. Lynn Eaton. Eaton. Hello. Hi. 
How are you? I'm Lynn Eaton. I'm back, supporting trails again. Um, last year, uh, my husband and I traveled for pleasure, if I remember correctly, once. And what did we do? We went up to Missouri, and we did the k- part of the Katy Trail. It's a bu- rails-to-trails conversion, bike, walk, whatever you want. Um, this year, we went down to um, uh, Petty Jean State Park to hike. When we went to, um, uh, oh, sorry, um, later this summer, we're going to go to Milwaukee because my husband's going to be in an athletic event. We hope in the fall to go back and do another section of the KD Trail. You, you may see a theme here, hiking, biking, athletic events. People travel for those events, for those kinds of things. This is, this is what we need here. We've got plenty of people coming to shop. We need a different segment of the population, people who are active and, and want to get exercise and won't travel just to shop. I, you know, if I can't hike or do something active when I go somewhere, I don't really want to go. You know, we'll look for some places that we can go to be active. Um, this is good for the economy. It's good for the shops. The people who travel, and I'll, I want to give a couple examples. There were people last year, or last year, yeah, that came from Puerto Rico to do the Eureka. Two years before, I met a guy from New York to, at the, once again, for the triathlon portion of the Eureka, which is really short. And I said, oh, so you were here on business or something? And he said, no, I came for the Eureka from New York. People will travel. I mean, think of the Boston Marathon. People compete to get a slot to hurt themselves <laughs> to go to Boston. Um, athletic events and, um, and outdoor activities will bring people from a long distance. We, we heard, and once again, if you do these things and you travel long distance, a lot of people will post it on social media. That is the best advertising you can possibly get. Um, we noticed a friend of ours had done the um, Natchez Trace Parkway. That's in Tennessee. It's a big, long, kind of a road uh, bicycling uh, thing that you can do. It's, I think, 444 miles. We heard about it. We saw it. We looked it up. We got excited. We want to do it. We'll travel to Tennessee to do it. I wouldn't travel to Tennessee for probably anything else. Um, so um, that's that. And, and when you travel, as opposed to people coming over from Rogers, you stay in hotels, you eat out, and when you're not killing yourselves doing something athletic, you, you go shopping. Okay, one last thing. Trails maintenance. Um, my parents live in Sedona. Sedona also has fabulous trails, um, mostly mountain biking or hiking, um, all over the city. Um, my mother is 90. They are trail cleanup volunteers. There are lots of people here in Eureka Springs just like that, that would be willing to help out and, and keep maintain the trails that we have. This is a win-win for everyone. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> I need to get that last Don't one in there. Don't make me come back. Yeah, okay. <laughs> You're welcome. Jay Bender. How are you doing, sir? That was my wife, uh, so I'll be shorter. Uh, you guys are smart people. It's, it's pretty clear what you all ought to do. Uh, it, it seems pretty clear to me that everybody is in favor of this. Um, there have been a few people in town who have raised concerns. That acknowledged, I think, any concerns that people have about privacy, uh, things like that, can be mitigated, uh, can be dealt with. Somebody else mentioned being able to, uh, you know, try a trail, and if that's not working out, abandon it and build something different. Uh, but I think um, I just would like to encourage you to adopt this and approve the master plan uh, and give the town what 
it clearly wants. Uh, it's, I, mean, I don't know how many people are left to speak, so uh, if my heart goes out to you, you're being very patient, and, and we appreciate you listening to all of us. Uh, please do the right thing. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Christy Braswell. Okay. Penny Carroll. Hi, Penny Carroll. Good evening. I'll try to be brief. Um, I'm in favor of parks um, and this plan. I sell real estate here in town, and as such, I, you know, I kind of know some of the things that happen to. I feel. For the people that see this as having a negative impact on their homes and their property, um, when property next to you is unutilized or, you know, for a long period of time, people kind of psychologically annex it. You know, it becomes, they see it almost as theirs. And so it's, I feel for these people. I understand it's difficult to embrace this change. But a couple of things. It will not hurt your property values. I mean, the property over in Bentonville, Fayetteville, trails by their houses are just, I mean, that's a, people love it. I mean, someone who comes in and doesn't have that memory of what this used to be will embrace having a trail, and it'll value your property. Um, I used to live by the Buffalo River, and I was friends with the person that owned what is now the national headquarters, and he didn't want to park either. So it's just sometimes you have to do for the greater good, and unfortunately it can't benefit every single person. But in the big scheme of things, this will benefit the most people. Thanks. Thank you, ma'am. Babe Beosat, I know he's here. Okay. How you doing, sir? Uh, tell them to just, after Bay finishes, to come in all at once so I'll know who they are. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Okay. Who, who came back? No, somebody just came back. More people. Oh, more people. Up. Okay. Here you go. Uh, we usually don't do this but because it extends everything. Bay, you have the mic, sir. Thanks, sir. You're welcome. Hi, I'm Bay Biasat. I've been a, a realtor here for 37 years, and uh, you can tell I'm an avid biker. I, I think I'm very much in favor of the bike trail system, but I'd like to speak a little bit like Penny did to the uh, economic aspect for the town. We own a uh, nightly rental, my wife Carolyn and I, and what happens now is people call often and ask about the biking in the area, if there's biking or not, or what kind of trails we have, or they paved or not paved, ask a lot of questions about it, or a question we've had for years is what is there to do in the area, and this will help a lot, because to have a, to have a family-oriented physical thing that people can do in town is definitely a plus for the area. In other words, it will help us economically. And also, the property values. I know uh, there's been quite a few studies done on the property values in areas that they do go up with things like trail systems, even the property that abuts the actual trail themselves. I know when we go to different places, like we've been at Gulf Shores, Alabama many times, and there's an area in there we call the boardwalk. That there's a trail system right in front of the homes that are actually on Mobile Bay. And that is one of, the, one of my favorite places in the whole world. And you can tell that the people coming from their own homes to walk their dogs or ride their bikes or walk on the trails is a definite plus. So, again, it does help the property values of the area. So uh, I won't take more of your time. I just think it would be, definitely be a big help to the town itself, not just for riding, but for the property values and the economic benefit. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Crystal Rust. <laughs> we can toy next time. We just we need a plan for that it, thing. Here, it's probably easier to do this. I 
just want to start by thanking the city council members for your service to the community. Um, thank you for doing your best and representing the people that elected you. Um, I know it must be difficult to know exactly what the community wants concerning certain issues um, since you often only hear the extreme sides. So on the topic of an in-town trail system, I decided to do what I, what I could to help clarify. I wasn't sure myself where the community stood on the issue, uh, so the most objective way that I knew how to find out was to conduct a random poll over the telephone, focusing on residents that lived within the city limits that I did not personally know. I spent three hours making calls, but only reached 31 people total. But still, the, I think the weight of the statistics is obvious. 71% um, want the trail system. 19% were, um, they didn't care one way or the other. And 10% were against it. So only 1 out of 10 people didn't want the trails, whereas 7 out of 10 were for it. Um, I hope that this information helps in conveying an unbiased opinion of where our community stands on the the issue. So, thanks. Thank you. Chris Roberts. Gone. Jack Moyer. the opportunity to speak today. Um, I'm here to speak as a resident uh, in support of trails for the quality of life. <laughs> I personally uh, walk the trails on a regular basis. I ride uh, my bike to work back and forth, and I support that effort. I also speak as the vice president of the Crescent and Basin Park Hotels, to which we support the effort of building a trail system in Eureka Springs. There's a couple of reasons that I want to bring to the forefront today. First and foremost, I wanted to share with you that this effort has been long-standing. Uh, I brought actually minutes from the Community Development Partnership meeting in October of 2004, where we talked about building a trail system around Black Bass Lake, enhancing the trail system at Lake Leatherwood, uh, Lake Leatherwood Park, and developing a path whereas we could develop a connection, a regional trail interconnect that could develop a quality trail system for not only residents, but also to serve to recruit visitation in shoulder months, building April and fall winter travel. The other thing that I thought was interesting is I went through notes and I actually contacted Joe David Rice, the state tourism director, because I think there's real questions that have to be resolved also. And one of those questions for you all is the liability issue. So I wanted to make sure that I went to the state's top individual who's in charge of trails for the state and ask the question, what is the specific liability for a property owner? And if I may, I'll enter this into the record and I'll leave it for you. <clears throat> but I wanted to make sure I read it into the record also. Except as specifically recognized by or provided in, it gives a, a statute, an owner of land who either directly or indirectly invites or permits without charge any person to use his or her property for recreational purposes does not thereby, and I'll read specifically the item three, does not assume responsibility for or incur, or incur, incur liability for any injury to person or property caused by an act or omission of such persons, nor do they assume responsibility for or include incur liability for injury to the person or property caused by any natural or artificial condition, structure, or personal property on the land. I think that pretty clearly talks about liability for the property owner, uh, assuming that there is no uh, rental, no for-profit uh, for rental. And if I may uh, add that into the, uh, to the record. You know, the other thing that I wanted to do is, is really thank Bruce and Bruce and the Trail Committee you know, for 10 years, they have worked on this issue. And I think it's really exciting that tonight the vocal majority has spoken. And the vocal minority that we've always been wondering who they are, 
they're out there sweating in the other room. So I really encourage that you support uh, developing a trail system in Eureka Springs. Thank you for your time. Beverly Blankenship. Beverly? Oh, it's cooler in here. Yes. Hi, I'm Beverly Blankenship, and I have brought a few things that I feel are um, very hurtful to Eureka Springs. I'd like for y'all to please take them into consideration. One, um, earlier this year, I saw a fire hydrant taken out at South Main and Benton Street. The fire hydrant leaked for weeks, and then Public Works stood around it for a few days. And then it was removed and concrete poured over the place that that fire hydrant was. I worry about things like that. I wish y'all would worry about them and put the fire hydrant back with a few more. Another thing is that there's a water leak in the middle of Main and Spring Street. It's been there at least six months. And y'all worry about raising our water costs. I think you should worry about fixing the water leak. Also, I just have four things. Number three, council passed an ordinance waiving the bidding process and approving funds with three readings and an emergency clause all in one night for over $80,000 for an issue that just several months ago at your very own town hall meeting didn't even make a list of things that needed to be addressed. That in itself should tell you you need to ask a lot more questions about it rather than pass it in three readings in one night. The last thing I'm here to speak about is I'm very concerned that you're going to overturn the mayor's veto tonight and do something that's irreversible and damaging to our city. I saw, personally saw, the Bricks' deed to their property and all around the city's property was their property. It wasn't an easement. It was city property, and theirs was all around it. It was very clear. They knew exactly what they were buying. The Parks Commission recommended not vacating the property because of the potential use for future trails. The Planning Commission recommended not vacating the property because there are many acres of land beyond the Brixis property that could one day be developed. And when it is, all of the planning training that we've ever been to told us that when there's going to be development, you need roads in and out. It may not happen in our lifetime, but it's surely a possibility that one day that area that's called Marble Flats will be developed and we're going to need those roads. I'm sure that over 100 years ago, there were many that sat on commissions just like you that thought we'd never build roads up and down Mountain and Owen and even Planer Hill. Thank goodness that there were those that could see in the future and could know that we were going to need those roads. Time's up, Barry. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Uh -huh. All right. Next is Wade Williams. I'm here to talk about the issue of the, I guess it's item number one about overriding the veto. Um, I believe I sent a letter that got here a day late at the last meeting. However, the situation, as best I know, has not changed. I've been in communication with Matt Bishop. The uh, Marble Flats and Mr. and Ms. Bricks have reached an agreement in principle. There are a few small items that need to be resolved with regard to our objection to their vacating uh, the street. Specifically, we want to make sure that we have a, an easement from the city that connects our property to the water and sewer connections, and essentially we need public works to mark where those easements would go to. Other than that, it's a matter of going on to the property and marking exactly where the easement is so that we can make sure that we aren't getting into any existing improvements or, or walls. And at that point, we rewrite the ordinance and we're through. None of that takes place if the veto gets over, or if the veto is overridden, because then there's an ordinance in place that does not meet those criteria. Thank you. Thanks, sir. 
Jasmine Stanley. How are you? Hello. Um, I'm here to speak about the no fluoride, please. There are many facts against fluoride. We understand them in Eureka Springs and have voted twice against fluoride, yet we are still being forced to have it in our water. The more research I do, the more facts I uncover. Fluoride is listed by the FDA as an unapproved drug. An Arkansas statute prohibits putting poison in our water. If a kidney dialysis patient gets fluoride in their treatment, it will kill them. A worker named Joe Wallace in Bismarck, Arkansas, was harmed putting fluoride in the treatment plant and is still suffering from the effects of the burns he got today. He's not well yet. Senator David Johnson is the one who campaigned for the fluoride bill, and he received $7,500 in campaign donations because he passed that bill. There is no available documentation as to what is in the fluoride, and yet we are supposed to blindly put it in our water. Cities across the country are banning fluoride because they're realizing the dangers of it, and we need to do the same. I can go on and on about this. There are so many facts. I've been researching it. The research is overwhelming against fluoride. I would like to repeal the government's mandate. I would love to stop the fluoride. If we could pass another ordinance against the fluoride, that's what I'm wishing for. And we need legal representation and the city council to vote for that representation and help us, please, to end the dangers of fluoride. I do not want to drink fluoride in my water. I, I sincerely believe it's toxic. I sincerely believe it's not against the, it is against the best interests of the citizens. Fluoride lowers IQ in children. There's been so many, many studies done about fluoride. Topically, fluoride's good for your teeth. <coughs> Ingesting it, it is a poison. You can get on the internet today and research all of this. All those facts are available. You can do exactly what I've done. Um, thank you for listening to me. And please consider this, please. Thank you, ma'am. Charles Stanley. How are you doing, sir? I'll make this short. Thank you very much for listening. Colgate toothpaste. If you ingest this, a child ingests this, they must notify a doctor. It's poison. And uh, I'll make it as short as possible. I know the FDA has said that it's a non-approved drug. And uh, I don't know what you all can do about this, but I'd really like to see if there's something can be brought to uh, change this. Uh, fluoride in the water is toxic. I know this. If you look up fluoride in the uh, chemistry uh, uh, directories, it'll show you that it's uh, LV. LD5, which means it'll kill five grams of it, will kill 50% of adults if, if ingested. So thank you very much for your thank time. You. Thank you, sir. Sure, Willis. Do what? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Cheryl Willis, uh, 12 East Mountain. Um, so many topics to speak to. Uh, I'm definitely against the vacation. Obviously, I think most of you know that um, for both legal purposes and for the reason that its highest purpose is for the majority of the people here that you represent, both for their physical and emotional health and for the uh, economic stability of the future of this town. Also, I am definitely for trails. Obviously, I'm on the trails committee. And uh, like someone else said, every single vacation that I've had in the past six years, the main objective was to go someplace to hike. 
backpack, find some place to get out into nature. We've gone all the way to um, Acadia, Maine. We've gone all the way to the West Coast, all the way to Canada, simply to hike. It's a good thing for the economy of this town. In places that I have lived, it's done nothing but help communities. My hometown in Kansas, I just went back there this week and realized, oh, they put a trail in. Everyone is doing it. Please support it. Fluoride. I just um, listened to an uh, NPR program, not NPR, OPT, at my mother's last night in Kansas. And they were talking about how otters are having problems because of the contamination in the water. And they get nerve damage. I have nerve damage. I have MS. I swallowed Crest when I was a kid and got very deathly ill. I'm willing to fight this battle monetarily, go for the lawyers, do whatever we have to. It's illegal to medicate us. It's illegal, illegal to poison us. It's illegal to go against the rights of the people to a vote. It's illegal to um, force us to pay money for something that we've all voted against taxation without representation. And that's what it will come to because eventually we're going to have to pay to put fluoride in the water to kill us. I cannot drink it. I'm not allowed to. I have a very strict diet. I'll have to spend $1,000 on a fluoride re get it, rid of it out of my water. Let's stop this. Last night on NPR I listened to a program. This is Back to Trails. I listened to a program that said they're having a ribbon cutting tonight at Kessler Mountain in Fayetteville. They're so excited about the trails there in a very congested um, uh, residential area. And they're so excited because the Walton Foundation has $150,000 to put into their trails. We could have that too. We don't want the money of the city. It's, we're not doing that. This is all about private donations, private money, Volunteers, let's go for the trails. Please vote yes tonight. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Scott Thompson. Thanks, Scott. Why don't you get Donna and just bring her in here too? She's here. He's up next. Good evening, and thank you for uh, letting me speak tonight. I came here mainly for the fluoride issue. Uh, I, I know it's a state issue. I'm not sure what we can do about it. As we all know, we've, we've voted it down here twice. Um, we're Eureka Springs. We can uh, be an example for other communities. Um, there have been over 75 communities in the United States and Canada that have decided to not fluoridate. Uh, Portland, Oregon recently decided not to fluoridate. Uh, I think we should look at it again and just see what we can do. Um, briefly, the trails. I, I know that the trail system going from Fayetteville up to Bentonville and beyond is got a lot of people excited. Um, I, think it's, I think it's in the air, and I think it's a good thing to do. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Ms. Donna? Thank you. Um, I'm Donna Thompson. Uh, I also think that trails are a good idea. I am concerned about some of the uh, the uh, private owners uh, of land who are close to the trails, and I hope that you will consider them and uh, the land that they are if they live close to the trails. I hope you will consider and take into consideration that. The main thing I'm concerned about is the fluoride. We voted this down twice. It is a poison. It, there has been so much information about fluoride. I urge you, please, to put this on um, one of your main agendas, and please do not allow the fluoride to get through. Thank you. Thank you. Ray Manns. How do you answer? Thank you. Uh, I'm Ray Manna, and I'd like Manna. to ask you to please consider uh, the fluoride issue very closely um, for a town that's based on health with a sort of a spa environment. It seems to me like it would be a backwards move to have such a thing happen here. Uh, I've been in the tourist business for years. Uh, I'm, I like to eat healthy. And I'm concerned. I don't want my pasta boiled in fluoride water, the potatoes boiled in fluoride water, 
the lettuce washed in fluoride water. Please, let's protect our business here. This is a wonderful place that we have. I don't know anybody in my life that likes fluoride or wants it. I know a lot of people from the Northeast to the West Coast. It seems like it's a backwards move, and that's not what Eureka's about. So whatever we can do, please. And I believe that you'll have the community fully behind you. Thank you for your time. Thanks, sir. Bill Featherstone. It's a topic on the agenda. Ten. Ten. Bill Featherstone. I'm not here to talk about the benefits of trails. <laughs> However, I am here to say thanks because um, as a community that largely depends on volunteers to get everything that needs to be done, we don't say thanks so enough. And I'm as guilty as anybody. So I'd like to start by saying thank you for letting us speak tonight. I know it's not easy to sit through. I've been there many a time. But thank you very much. I do want to give some uh, thanks for those people that have brought us to where we are today with regard to trails and give you a little uh, chronological perspective. And that would begin by thanking our forefathers who were wise enough, visionary enough, to plaid a system of streets and alleys and allow for green spaces and uh, reservations and parks and et cetera, et cetera. Most of those areas still exist today, and that's a good thing. But to move forward from there, uh, and in the context of what most of us think of as trails, you have to go to all the way to the early 1990s. And there you give thanks for the early pioneers of the Parks Commission, Steve Beecham, Rick McCormick, and all those who served with them. Thank you to those people for uh, being visionary enough to get our trail system started. No conversation about trails, uh, and I'll pardon, pardon me for not saying I wasn't going to talk about trails, but I, I'm here to thank people. Uh, no conversation about trails would be complete without uh, thanking the Ozark off-road cyclists, who most people are probably not aware are responsible for the construction of the vast majority of trails we enjoy at Leatherwood as volunteers. Along with that, uh, and working joint with, jointly with them, you would uh, automatically have to thank David Renko, who's been there every step of the way. Um, it's hard for me to not to unemotionally not talk about uh, or to talk about David Renko, but all I'll say is there's a, uh, a very special place in uh, Eureka Outdoor Heaven uh, reserved for David Renko. Thank you, David. To move forward a little bit more, uh, that brings us to the last three or four years and working on the document that sits on your desk that uh, we hope you approve tonight. And uh, before I thank all those folks that are responsible for that document, all of whom are listed in the, the front section of the document, I want to say thanks to some people that have uh, professionally helped us uh, construct that document. Misty Murphy with the Northwest Arkansas Council, Guy Hedlund with the Park, National Park Service, Matt Mihelovich, the Trails Coordinator for the City of Fayetteville, uh, and Steve Snyder with the International Mountain Bikers Association. These are pros, and they have been instrumental in, in getting us what is a better document than what most cities put together for a master plan for trails. But most of this is due to the hard work of all those people listening to the front section of the, of the plan, that being the Trails Committee. But there are four people that I really, really want to thank. And I apologize for getting emotional. I'm tired. It's late. And I am definitely emotionally tied to this issue. But I've had the great pleasure and the honor of working with four incredibly great people. Bruce Levine. Cheryl Willis, Dorothy Gurton, 
And last but not least, Adam Biasat. I've had the opportunity to work with lots of volunteers over the years, but they rise to the top of the finest people I've ever had the opportunity to work with. I thank them. I will never be able to thank them enough, and I sure hope the city will take the opportunity when they have the chance to thank them, because you have no idea how, just how hard they've worked to get this document to your, your desk, to your table. The last thing I want to say, please forgive me. The last thing I want to say is there is one more thank you I, <laughs> that I want to make, but I can't make it yet. And that is, I hope at the conclusion of tonight's business, I can look at all of you people right in the eye and say thank you for doing something really, really great to take what is a disconnected, disjointed, not so bad group of trails that we have scattered around and allowing us to connect it all and to make a trail system out of it and take it from a one-day event to a three-day event. Not for us, but quite frankly, it takes so long to build trails out that myself included, I'm not going to get to enjoy them that much. But the generations behind us, they will, and they will thank you as well. Sorry I took too much thank time. Thank you, Bill. Grace Gladden Nance. Grace Gladden Nance. Hello, Grace. How are you? Um, I so value your time. I so thank everyone for being here. I know you're committed to our city. You have been for a very long time. My husband and I moved here in 1978. This is the first time I've showed up to speak on anything. So you can tell this is something that's very near and dear to my heart. I'm all about family. I'm all about husbands and wives and kids and friends having positive things to do that are good for themselves. Uh, when King and I moved here, he said, this place is half scenery, half salary. And that was really true. We came here because we love the rivers, we love the lakes, we love the historic treasures, we love the people, and that's why we chose to move here. I see this as an opportunity to bring salary from scenery, and I think it's so exciting. I so appreciate the efforts that everyone has made uh, towards this, this master plan, all the dedicated hours, and all that they have done to educate all of us about this. And I feel like every point has been made that could be made. I'm just here to say I appreciate a vote for yes. I don't think anyone here would ever regret it. I think it's not just for us now. I think it's for future generations. I think it's staying current with our tourism industry. And I think that's our industry. And I think we're very fortunate to have the assets that we do and we can capitalize on them. So thank you very much for your time. And um, I'm here in support of these trails. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, number 21, I apologize, but I can't read the name. I... Grant Robinson. What is it? Grant Robinson, maybe? Uh, it may be. <laughs> I still can't read it, but that looks close enough. Does it look like Grant? Thank you. Uh, Pat Masukas. to pass these out on behalf of Shone. My name is Pat Matsukas. I live at 5 Mountain Street. On the issue of fluoride, recently Gerber came out and said that they are now selling unfluoridated water for their baby mixture. So I would like to encourage the council as a way to make a solution is to find money in your budget to get a special lawyer that specializes in this kind of legalization take it out of our city attorney's hand who's already too busy, find a lawyer who specializes in this kind of deal in fluoridation, and let's get the ball rolling to make this happen. Many of us will stand up strongly, and we would have fundraiser or do whatever we could to help offset those costs. Um, number two, good neighbors. 
uh, by ignoring your own planning commission several weeks ago at your last meeting, I was so disappointed that the planning commission had voted 6 nothing to not allow the Basin Park to have a parking garage. They came in here, Jack Moyer did in his friendly self, and you all just gave it to him without asking one word of the planning commission that was sitting here as to why not and how many of us showed up. It wasn't just me that fought against this. There were many of us. And it's really unfortunate that you guys didn't even look at it. Number three, parking garage versus trolley. I see the parking garage, unfortunately, is on our agenda again. And I say this, you want a parking garage? Great, get rid of the trolleys. You can't have both. At a $5 million price tag to put in a parking garage down there on ground we don't even know what's under. You can't have the trolleys. You can't take federal money both ways. We are, somehow I think we think.